If you're using Instagram to share your astrophotography and to enjoy the pictures of others, you might have stumbled across this account here, the Pic Astro app. It's a project I follow for over a year now. And the creator of it, Tom McCrory, he calls it the Insta for Astro Nerds. And after a year of building, of testing, today was the big day and it got released. So you can download it now and start posting pictures there. But while the app download is actually free, the next thing you're confronted with is a paywall and it costs you 60 US dollars for a year subscription. There's no test version, there's no peeking inside, there's no monthly subscription. And so I understand that you need to carefully consider if you want to spend these 60 bucks. Because in astrophotography, there is so much you could buy instead for these 60 bucks, like some spacers or a good USB cable. But joking beside, 60 bucks without a testing is quite an ask. And so I fully understand if people hesitate. And so, given that I get money from my Patreons, to check exactly stuff like that out, I immediately subscribed and I will tell you now what I experienced right after the trip. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So good to see you and thanks for watching my channel. So we will go in a second on my computer and have a look at it. And by the way, that's a funny story when I say computer, because at the moment it's exclusively available on your smartphone. And because they do not want that you steal the picture, you cannot do any screenshots and you cannot do any screen recording. So how can I show you what inside? I could not have done it a few weeks ago. I will be able to do it today because of the new Sequoia, which offers iPhone mirroring. So if I mirror my iPhone and then do a screen recording on that, it works. At least until now, until Apple figures out that that probably defeats the whole purpose and will actually fix that. But before we go on the computer, let's look at the value proposition. What is the idea behind Pic Astro? Now what they say it is pure astrophotography, no ads, a control environment, where nobody can download your pictures without you knowing it, and high res pics. So your pics cannot destroy it from the compression algorithm like in Instagram or Facebook. So I think that's quite an interesting proposition. And what they do not say, but I feel that's also a little bit the idea that it is like an astro bin for your smartphone. And so what we want to go and explore now is if these value propositions they made hold up, but also in general, what the experience is, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So let's go now to the computer and have a look at it. Okay, welcome to my computer and welcome to my iPhone and welcome to Pick Astro. Obviously, this is now not such a convenient format for a YouTube video, but that's how it is. It is designed for this format and it only works in this format. And by the way, I just also downloaded it on the iPad and also there you have exactly the same design. So you cannot use it as an iPad app, but simply as an iPhone app. So that's the entry screen of pick Astro. You can actually create as usual a profile with a logo, with a username, with a description. Now the first oddity is a little bit these stars. That's not how cool you are, but that's how generous you are. So the more stars you give others, the more this number increases. On the other side, obviously here I have my first picture uploaded today, the dumbbell nebula, and I got 12 stars. Also, and I have not yet figured out how I think if people give a lot of stars, then they can also give like these trophies. And so you can also score 
trophies and I think then there will be a picture of the month or something like that based on how many trophies you collect. Now when we look at the picture that I uploaded, if I click on it, it gets bigger. I get some data about it, degradation time, how full the moon was, if it's the northern or the southern hemisphere, my portal class and the description that I entered. Now you can enter way more information if you go here and show full star card then actually you see here you rig and funny enough with this iPhone mirroring I cannot scroll. That's the only thing I cannot do and I don't know if it's because of the app is kind of secured or if it's just a issue with this very new feature but so Imagine that you see here accessories, it goes on and on and on. You can enter all your filters, all the number of exposures, the calibration files and so on. And that will all be listed here. So tons of metadata, kind of similar as you would see in Astrobin. What is suboptimal here, while in Astrobin you have pull down menus and all the equipment is actually already available and you simply choose it here. This is all free text. I would hope later on this will also be metadata that you can select so that afterwards you can also search for it or filter for it. At the moment it's simply on you to write it correctly. If I click now again on the dumbbell nebula, now I get my full picture. And this is as stated high res. So if I would be now on my iPhone, I could pinch in and I would not be limited by the compression. Now how does the data entry work? If I want to enter a new picture and we can do that now, I click here on the plus, I can upload my amazing space image and if I'm lazy and I want to just do a little bit of image description, I just select here and all the metadata entry below disappears. Now when I click here on upload, it goes here in my iOS library. And that's a little bit odd again because there's also no website login. So it's really only just the app. And then it states you could upload FITS file or linear files or whatever. But as long as you only can actually go into your photo library of iOS or I don't know how it's with Android, you will not get a FIT file in here. So something to consider. At the moment, you cannot upload a file just from your. Um, iCloud files folder for example, but that's for another day. Here funny enough I can now actually scroll. So let's say for doing it I choose the moon here. So I have now my photo in here. I can give an object type. I can choose here lunar. Portal 5 is where I live. Observation location is Europe. Lunar face. Um, it looks like it was pretty full. I don't know anymore, but let's just take for the, for the sake of it a hundred percent telescope type. This was with my CPC 800, so it's a reflector. And we're also here, we're a little bit inconsistent at the moment because we have on one side reflector, but then actually the Dobsonian, the Newtonian, the SCT, they're also reflectors, right? So but so this was an SCT and now again I'm <laughs> I cannot scroll down here which also mean I cannot save it actually funny enough but anyway if you would scroll down here you see exposure time you can enter some stuff you can add this smart card where you then have even way more information like the exact filters and the exposure numbers and the exposure time and so on so that's how you enter picture here I would say it's about comparable with how you enter the picture in Astrobin. Now what else do we have? We have up here a notification button. We see actually who follows me. We can follow them back. We can see who gave us a star. Now there's the next oddity. You see Astro A car just followed you. Follow back? I don't know. But does it matter? And at the moment it doesn't matter at all. I haven't figured out anything that would change if you follow them or not because you cannot filter 
that you can only look at the pictures of the people you follow. It's only, I think, in the message board where this would actually appear, but that's kind of pointless because usually in Astrobane or so you follow people specifically because you like their pictures and so you want to look explicitly at these pictures. But that seems to be not available at all at the moment. So if we go to the bottom here and we go on this here, this is star camps. Kind of you can create a group for yourself of people that you like, but why is this not the people you follow? So you could, for example, do probably a group of people who make moonshots, the people of the real experts and whatever. Yeah, haven't really looked too much into that. Also still a little bit of mystery what this is all about. Here you have the messages. It's a little bit like a chat. You can chat with people. And if I open a new message, then these are the people who are actually following me, interestingly, because I do not follow all of them. So I can now chat with people that follow me, but I think I could also look for other users here. And now we get actually to the place where you can look at others' pictures. And again, I cannot scroll, but you would actually scroll through that and look at pictures. And when you like a picture, you click on it, then you could give it a star. But before I want to give it a star, I want to look at the whole picture. So I click on it again. So it's now the second time I click on a picture. And I still don't have the full picture. And then I click a third time on a picture. And now I get the full picture. So there's three clicks on the same picture until I finally can look at it full. And now I could obviously zoom in. Now when I want to give it a star, I go out of that again. Here is no star. Here I can look at the text, but there's no star. So I have to go back again. And now I can give it a star. But quite honestly, for everybody who uses PixInsight, we're used for very, very cumbersome user interfaces. So this is nothing that shocks us. And by the way, I already communicated all the things I mentioned here to Tom. And he was like that he probably is considering this stuff for phase two. So we have to be fair. It's version 1.000, so it can only go up from this point. I fully respect what has been done. I think it has a lot of potential, especially when we look at what's going on in Insta. It's great having something in your pocket and being able to scroll exclusively to high quality astrophotography pics without any AI trash, without any political statements. So I really like the idea, but quoting again my favorite monkey from Shrek, are we there yet? I would say not really, no, no. It's a good start, but we're not there yet. There's another, from my point of view, rather large flaw. And, and what, what I already told you before with this um, follow, it's just one of these things, because if we go back here to the, to the full screen, we go to the filtering option. So what can I filter? I can look at him randomly, the most recent. User location is Northern Hemisphere or Southern Hemisphere, full stop. Telescope type is simply a Dobsonian reflector refractor what we entered before. Nobody cares. Object type is Nebula, Galaxy and so on. Okay, could be. But if we enter so much metadata into this solution, we want to exploit this, like in Astrobin. I want to be able to look at all the pictures recorded with a 103 APO from Ascar. I want to be able to look at something that is recorded with a certain camera. And especially, I want to look at specific objects. If I'm shooting, a certain nebula and I want to see how others did process it, I want to be able to look at all pictures from this nebula. And not even that is possible at the moment. And given I follow people, I want to look here just at 
the photos of the people that I follow. That's why I follow them. <laughs> and all of that is not possible yet. And by the way, about metadata, what I haven't shown you yet, but if you go up here to settings, to setups, here you can enter actually your rig, which you can then simply attach as a setup card to your pictures that you don't have to enter all the stuff day, time and time again. But again, all of this is free text. With all of that said, would I recommend that you spend these $60 for getting a subscription. I would say from the present functionality at the moment, no, it's just, it's not enough there yet that it's really worth it. Be quite honest, at least from my perspective. But given all the time that was invested in this app and given that I feel how passionate Tom is about this project, I have no doubt that he will continue and improve that. And the basis that he laid with this, with this application right now is good. So if you subscribe today, on one side, you can start entering your picture at a very early stage and have it already there when everybody else starts pouring in because all the functionality is coming. And on the other side, by subscribing and paying money, Tom is actually more motivated and has more funds to do the necessary additions to make this a great app. And so you're actually supporting his efforts and we might get even faster to all the functionality that we feel which is still needed. And so, so I feel at the moment it's a little bit like Go fund me, like Patreon, like all of this stuff. It's actually with about $5 a month where you support Tom to continue his journey and to provide us with a great app. And from, from my perspective, that's worth it. So I hope this helped now that you can make a decision if you wanna subscribe or not to pick Astro. I'm obviously very curious what your conclusion is if you will subscribe or not, if not, what would be needed that you would consider it, and if you subscribe, what the key driver is, but also what you would like to see changed in a phase two. Please leave all of that in the comments below. If you wanna to belong to the first ones to get news like the Picastro app, have a look at my Patreon channel where I post stuff like that at the moment when I hear it. Link is in the description below. See you next time and clear skies.